What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Sky Bees. So last episode, guys, we ended up making ourselves the Wither Bee. Yeah, we made a bunch of them. Yep, our little Wither Bees are over here having a good time being attached to this fence post. I'm sure it's fun. Anyway, uh, in order for them to produce what they are supposed to produce, which is Nether Stars, we actually have to get them a Nether Star block, right? So in order for us to do that, we need nine Nether Stars, which means we have to kill nine Wither bosses mm-hmm all right so in order for us to kill wither bosses i was kind of hinting at it last episode we are going to take a look at using the vanilla mechanic where you can spawn a wither boss inside a flatbed rock right and they're like trapped inside of it and as they shoot they're shooting inside of it so it doesn't like hurt anything <laughs> around yeah um, in order for this to work though, we are going to need to get ourselves two wither proof blocks to put in the top center of this three by three. So directly below our white elevator here, two blocks down. So it's on top. Well, I mean two blocks tall. So it's on top of the bedrock. All right. So in order for us to do that, <laughs> let's take a look. We need to get ourselves. What is it called? Uh, wither proof blocks, right? We've made one of these. That's what our wither skeleton bees are using. Uh, each one of these requires us to have four steel scaffolding, right? And then a steel scaffolding requires a whole bunch of steel. Now, I was going to go and just cook up a whole bunch of steel in our immersive engineering machines over here. I don't know how much we have in these or if we have any at all in here. It doesn't look like we have any. Okay. So if we come upstairs and we took a look at our supply of steel we are sitting at six not so good now anyway like i was saying i was thinking about just cooking up a bunch more iron and turning into steel and waiting all the time but i figure you know there is a steel bee and we have coal bees already and we have iron bees already let's go ahead and make it a baby right and make some steel bees so uh actually let me eat one of these honey apples by the way that food is op OP, I like it. All right, so coal, iron, make it a baby, and let's get ourselves our first steel bee. Where is it? Where is it? Is it right there? Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, uh, it's beautiful. So there's our first steel bee. Awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this seven more times. We'll get eight of these in total. We'll start making or start using these bees to make some steel. Actually, you know what? Let me take a look. Do I need a steel block? Steel B. Uh, B flowers. I need a steel block. So I need nine of steel in order for these to make steel. All right, well, let me just once again, take a look at how much steel we have. We have six. I need to cook up three more so we can get a steel block. Anyway, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm gonna backtrack just a little bit. While having steel bees is actually good for the future, so we never have to worry about making steel again, I'm still waiting for them to grow up and it's taken a while. Like they still got over two minutes <laughs> to become a fully grown adult. And then I'd have to move our other bees over here and all of that stuff. There's a little bit of setup involved and I decided it was faster just to use the remaining 32 coal coke that we had in here to make steel right so there's 12 steel that i've just created we needed nine in order to make a block for uh the steel bees to do something but since we're not using them at the exact moment we can use that towards making ourselves the steel uh frames what was it called i can't remember what are we making wither proof blocks let's bookmark this and we'll get rid of this stuff uh, yeah, we needed the steel scaffolding. That's what it is, right? So we need four of those. We get six of those per craft. We need a total of eight of those. And I think we had two remaining from the previous ones that we made. So we only have to do one recipe. So I think we are good to go. So we need to make three of these and then use three of that. Do, do, do. And there we go. So there's eight of those. And we have nine steel remaining for our steel bees. All right. So we are good to go on that. Um, I went ahead and I made 36 soul sand so we can make the wither bosses, right? So you gotta make them like that, and then you need the wither skeleton skulls. Um, we have the steel scaffolding, so we need to get ourselves the obsidian and then the wither skeleton skulls. 
So we need the same amount of obsidian as we have the steel scaffolding. So just eight of these. Very good. How much do we have in here? <laughs> yeah, that's right. 1,200 of those. <laughs> Quite a bit. And how are we doing on the Wither Skeleton Skulls? About over 300. That's great. Uh, so we need 27 of those, right? So I'll just grab a full stack and then well, I guess I'll grab two stacks then. Uh, we only need 27. All right, so I can put those away in this other stack that I double clicked out of there away. I think we have everything we need now. So we should be able to make that my crafting table over here. We should be able to make this two weatherproof blocks. Uh, I need a way, I guess I'll just use soul sand to stack up. So yeah, we come up here and then if I place this and that, that really should be all that we need to do in order to spawn a wither boss under here and then keep a trap so it can't go crazy. I'm a little worried. Are you worried? I'm a little worried that something could go wrong. I think I'm going to make a backup of the world just in case. I did try this in a creative test world, but <laughs> I'm going to make a backup of the world just in case. I don't want my entire base ruined from this. Uh, but yeah. Let me go ahead and do that and we will be right back. All right, so a backup of the world has been made. So we're covered in case something goes catastrophically wrong. Hopefully it doesn't. The other thing that we need to do is figure out how we're going to kill the wither boss. We can use our diamond sword, but that's kind of low damage. We have this ax and this has 15 damage, which is over twice the amount of damage as our diamond sword. So I think we might grab this. It does not have uh well it has sharpness 10 on it it has looting five i don't know if looting will affect the wither boss it also has capturing i don't know if we're gonna spawn egg or anything like that and uh, i'm not sure what hell infusion five does as far as damage is concerned but we also have this armor too so i'll go ahead and grab that like if we're gonna die or if we're gonna have to fight the wither boss let's try not to die <laughs> um all right i think we should be good the only thing I'm going to have to do is uh, remove this torch, or at least move that away one block like that. All right, so here we go. We need to do this, 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 and that. I do believe the wither boss should, like, spawn where the center block is, so I think that should be all we have to do. Hopefully we don't have a problem. Okay, so the wither boss is spawned right there. It does do the explosion damage. Oh, let me go ahead. Uh, and turn down the volume. This is gonna be really loud, so I'll turn that down for now. Um, yeah, I don't think it'll cause any explosion damage outside of the area that it's in, but yeah, it does cause a little bit of player damage or entity damage. So this seems to be going all right. Wither boss is trapped, right? Not doing any damage. Just gonna be slow going. Uh, very slow process. Maybe looting will affect this and I won't have to kill it that many times. I don't know, but we have enough stuff where we could do that should we need to. All right, so Wither Boss is almost dead. And one more hit. No, this is the last one. Okay, that's it. We did it. Hard, hard, hard fight. <laughs> Nether star. There's one of them. We need to get eight more. So, uh, oh, was I using the wrong axe? Oh, I was using the wrong axe. Well, now I want to see how much more damage the right axe will do. So let's, let's just do this real quick. I'm not going to do the entire fight with you, but let's see how much the bone splitter does instead of the, uh, the diamond axe. Whoops. I was, thought I was using the correct one. All right. And all right. Explodey. And the correct axe. Oh, yeah, that does way more damage. This will be so much faster. All right. Well, I'll get to it. We'll be back. Well, now that nine wither bosses have been killed, we have our nether star. So we should be able to turn that into a nether star block like so. And I removed our dust bees that we had here, like I did with our sand bees to replace them with the wither skeleton bees. So we can get rid of this and then we can place that right here. And yeah, we just started putting in the uh, the wither bees, I guess, right? So you, 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 and then these four. Okay, glass, 
So those are all set, right? We should start getting wither combs as soon as they do their thing. Uh, I did have this unlocked, so that piece of dirt that I broke out, I think went into here, now in this pipe. Yeah, we have dirt here. All right, so, uh, yeah, the dust combs are now over here, the dust honey combs. This is just waiting for a new type of comb, which will be the wither star ones. So whenever we get those, that'll populate. And then I also need to get one more drawer for the nether stars to appear in. So let's do that too. I should also check and see if the, uh, if that produces some other type of comb or some other type of product besides uh, beeswax, I guess, right? So if we look at wither comb, the uses in the centrifuge, nope, we just get honey and we get beeswax. Everything is all good. All right, so I just need to place this down here so we have a place for the stars to go and we can just kind of wait for things to happen. All right, I went ahead and I got rid of our wither skeleton bees. Yep, I removed the witherproof block that we had here. I could put the bees in the bee jar, so they're in my inventory now. And we're just chewing through the rest of these combs that we have. So we have 44 here and plus a stack here. And I think this pipe holds another stack, so we got a little bit more to go. Uh, I'll just let them finish up and collect here before we swap that to another bee. But the important thing is, now that that is done, we are collecting nether stars. We have over a stack now, which is awesome. Uh, now that we have that done, we can take a look at our apiary. Yep, this is the reason why we wanted our nether stars, right? To do the apiary. The tier 1 requires 1 star. The tier 2 requires uh, 4 of the tier 1, so that's 5 stars in total, right? Tier 3 requires... Uh, those, what is that, 24 stars, I guess, is what that would be. And then tier 4, yeah, it, it gets a, to be a lot. Anyway, uh, let's just start off with the tier 1. Let's not get too crazy. We can upgrade over time, but the important thing is to get off of these older hives and switch over to the apiaries. That's what I'd like to do. Um, now what's cool about these apiaries is they can contain... Let's see, where is it? I keep seeing it in different places, like I look at one, it says it can hold unique types of bees and then I go and press it. Oh, I guess I have to press shift, not control. Uh, nine unique bees and it has 35% speed, right? So like it goes that much faster and then it always outputs eight combs of whatever bees in there. Now I believe it's eight per type of bee that's in there. So you don't need like eight of the same bee in there. You just need one, you always get eight combs. Like it's crazy how these things work. Uh, if we do the tier two, you get double the amount and it's even faster still at minus 40%. The tier three gives you honeycomb blocks four at a time, right? So that's a lot. And then the tier four gets you eight honeycomb blocks. I don't know if we're ever going to need resources that fast, but this right here, this will clean up a whole lot of space and we can make our bee area look a lot nicer. So that's what I'm concerned with. So yeah, we want to go ahead and make ourselves one of these guys. So we need four of the tier four hives, which I think we have extras that I made upstairs. I can't quite remember if we had four of them, but if not, we can probably take some. Oh yeah, we have seven of them. All right, so we need four of those. We need a star, which I did not grab, and then we need some type of honeycomb block. I don't know if you can use the vanilla ones, but we have we have these that we can use. Those are the vanilla ones, right? Uh, we could use, I guess, gravel honeycomb or the ender ones or whatever, but this should work just fine. And then one star. All right. So we should be able to craft that now, I think. And yes, there is our apiary. Sweet. Quest completed. Tier one apiary. That's really awesome. Now we are going to need an apiary storage. So the way this works is the bees live in the apiary. They are in like an enclosure. And as they produce items, it gets output into the storage. This can be anywhere on the multi-block. Uh, but yeah, this is another block that we are going to need. So that's a hopper, four chests, and then four more honeycomb. Well, that's pretty easy to do. And I think we even, we might have an extra hopper up here. Uh, yes, we have a hopper. Okay. Uh, four chests. And then four of the honeycomb, right? There we go. And storage. We did it. Quest complete. Apiary storage. You know, I didn't even see where the quests were on this. Let's take a look real quick. Is there anything else that we need? 
Uh, this also wants us to make an apiary breeder. I guess this is probably going to be better than the way we've been doing it over here using these fence posts. A little bit cleaner anyway. Uh, let's take a look at the apiary breeder. Let's make this. So we need... Oh, does it have to be any, except any Minecraft flowers? Okay, so it doesn't have to be the Batania ones. I was like, wow, that's really expensive. And then we also need another storage for that. Okay, well, let's just use the storage that we have. We have plenty of flowers downstairs. And then it was a bee jar, I think, was the other item. We can take one of those. And there is the apiary breeder. Awesome. All right, well, let me go ahead and make another apiary storage, and then I'm gonna start collecting our bees, tearing this kind of stuff down that we already set up over here. We don't need this anymore. And then we are gonna set up an apiary. All right, guys, so we are setting up the apiaries now. They have to be five by five on the inside and four blocks of airspace on the inside as well. So we got one, two, three, four blocks of airspace, and then this is gonna be the ceiling up here. Uh, and yeah, and the ground is actually part of the multi-block structure. Yeah, anyway, it's kind of a weird setup. There's a video by the developer uh, that I watched and I am pretty sure I am building this <laughs> correctly to the right specifications. But yeah, this won't be valid structure until we put the apiary block in here, the storage block, and we get the ceiling all enclosed, which I haven't done yet. But I thought I would show you guys the process here, what I'm doing. Yep, so we're doing acacia wood, right? We got acacia wood from sifting a long time ago. I think you sift dirt, and then you get the acacia seed, and I planted that, and vein mined, and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so we got a whole bunch of acacia wood now. Um, I'm using that as the structure material, the outside. In fact, I'm going to strip it, I think. Right-clicking with an axe will strip this stuff. And I think we're going to do the orange color. I think I like the way that looks. Yeah, I think we're gonna do the whole thing orange. I was almost just considering now if we just do the posts orange and like leave the acacia log look in the center here, but I mean, that looks kind of good too, but I think we're gonna do the whole thing orange. But anyway, uh, let me finish this up real quick. I think I have enough panes. Actually, I might be shy by one pane. Three, four, yeah, I misplaced one earlier. Um, anyway. So yeah, that's the way this is gonna work. So one of our hexagons here can support four of these apiaries. <laughs> yeah, it took a little bit of time to figure out how to properly center this, but yeah, this is five blocks away from the edge. There's five blocks in between, right? And then five blocks away from the edge over here. And then it is three blocks away from this diagonal. Yeah, the diagonal makes it kind of hard to work when with uh, square shapes or whatever. But anyway, yeah, three blocks away, then five blocks in the center again, three blocks away on this side. So we are all good. Everything is perfectly centered and I like it. Oh, I left those flowers here from where hives were before. Uh, yeah, so I got rid of all the bees. I got rid of the hives that we had there, all the redstone, all that stuff exists over in these chests now. I got rid of some of these uh, vanilla bees. We didn't really need 16 of those. And then, where's the other ones? Yeah, I got rid of some of our gravel ones. We didn't need 16 of those. We still got a whole bunch of these ender bees. We're gonna start bringing these numbers down. We were keeping eight of each type for breeding purposes. I don't think we need to do that anymore. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue working on this. I'm gonna get the, the ceilings installed in here and then we'll actually get one of these apiaries set up. I was going back and forth, but I kind of like the way that does look with the difference with the regular log along the horizontal and then the stripped along the vertical. So I think we're going to leave that. We have four of those. All of them look exactly the same now. Uh, let's go ahead and try and get this thing hooked up the way it's supposed to be. So we're going to go ahead and remove these blocks here and this block here. I'm going to put the apiary... I'm gonna put the apiary here, but we're gonna put the item storage below it. So let's place that here. And if I place the apiary while holding shift, it should face inwards, right? So that's the blank side here. And if we look on the inside, it's got that little spot. That's where the bees can enter and exit the apiary. All right, so I think we are good. I need to go down here and grab this stuff. That goes there, awesome. All right, so the apiary is good to go. And that should be a valid structure. We can tell if it's valid or not by right clicking on it and seeing what it says. Actually, it's probably not going to be valid. Uh, validate. 
Yeah, that's invalid. So the way this works, I believe this apiary block assumes by default it's right here. So we need to change the offset to vertical minus one, I think. There it is. So now we validate and we get this screen. So now it knows where the correct structure is. Otherwise, by default, we just have to have the apiary up one, but I want it right here. Anyway, so we are good to go. We can start putting bees into this. Inside the apiary itself, we are gonna need to have flowers and anything else that the bees that we have in here need. So if we have our wither bees in there or our ender bees, we're gonna need these blocks. Those can be a part of the floor, but like most bees are gonna need regular flowers, right? That's something that I forgot to do before closing this all in and I don't have silk touch, so this is, this is fun. <laughs> All right, I guess we'll just break one piece, one pane and we'll place some flower in here somewhere. How about right in the exact center? All right, that works for me. Then we'll put another star block right here. And we'll place the ender block next to that one. Can I? Okay, can. Wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to place that or not. All right, so gravel, sand, um, dust bees should all work on that flower. Ender bee, nether star, wither bee. Uh, if we put the weather skeletons in there, obviously we'd need another one of those blocks, but for right now, I think we should be okay to try and get started here. I don't have anything to fill that in, so we're just gonna fill this in and make it ugly <laughs> for now. I will fix that. Uh, all right, so let's grab one of these bees here. Where are they? I, I shouldn't have put my bees away like this, but I did. So here's a vanilla bee. I have them so they're in here somewhere. <laughs> the wither bee, uh, gravel bee. Let's take one ender bee. Yeah, I think a lot of those are just gonna dispose of. We'll probably keep one additional one, but I don't think we need near the amount that we have. We'll grab one dust bee and we will grab one sand bee, right? I think these are all the different types that we have set up. There might be one more in here, but anyway. This will be enough to get us started so we can check this out and see what's going on. Okay, so to put bees into here, let's start with a wither bee. So I place that, I click import, and by default, the bee is in the hive, but it's locked. It will not be able to escape the hive until I click this button. Now the reason why they did that is in case you put the bee in there and you're like, oh, I forgot to put a flower down. That's why. Or if you want to extract it, you can let it go back into the hive. It's locked in there and then you can export it. Anyway, so we have that. Uh, let's put in the ender bee. We'll put in the regular vanilla bee. Then we got, what do we got here? The gravel, the sand, and the dust bees. All right, I think all of those should have valid flowers inside, right? Um, let's go ahead and unlock them. Nothing should happen right now. Or maybe the wither bee will work during nighttime. I thought most bees didn't, but this one worked. It found its flower or maybe in apiaries. These guys don't care if it's nighttime or not. Hmm. Maybe they work during nighttime. I don't know. Anyway, it appears like everything's happening just fine in here. They're finding their flowers. They're doing what they need to do. All right. So this bee is in here. You can see how long it has left in the apiary, which is pretty cool. And then if we take a look at the storage, when this thing finishes up, almost there. Okay, so the time's up. It left the hive. It's doing it again. We have eight wither honeycomb my goodness guys that is really good so what we need to do to get this thing connected back up to our original system here is we need to run some cables to extract out of this out of the apiary storage back into this guy uh so for right now i think we're just going to do it this way how far over does that need to go like so like so it's not going to be pretty but either way uh, we can rearrange this later, but just to get us going for right now, this should work. And if I click that, we should be able to extract out of this. All those combs end up in to our drawers and everything is working just as it was before, which is really awesome. 
So all of our other apiaries, we can connect to the same pipe, which will connect to the drawer controller just the same way. All of our combs we can store in here, and then it's just a matter of how we're gonna set up the processing for those combs. Guys, I think we're gonna call it an episode here for today. Woo! We got a lot of stuff done. Getting into apiaries is super awesome. We finally got a whole bunch of nether stars going, utilize some vanilla mechanics to cheese the wither boss, but you know what? <laughs> in a sky block, you do what you gotta do, right? Only cost us making two of those witherproof blocks. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember, leave a like on this episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.